How's it going everyone? Thanks for tuning in again and in today's video we're going to get to the stage where we're laying components onto the turret board, specifically those com components that are associated with tube V1. And I'll just go through some of my methodology of, of how I lay things onto the turret board and as you can see I like to keep things as neat as possible. You don't have to follow that exact same methodology you can do it however way you like it's just that's just how I prefer to do it and um, if that gives you any help then that's great uh, we'll also have a look at a few tricks and techniques along the way and find all the components that you need grab your resistors your capacitors and warm up your soldering iron you'll need that and let's get into it a couple of things that that are going to come in real handy for you when you're cleaning the tip of your soldering iron is just have a, a damp sponge on hand and also grab yourself some Goldilocks and that's just going to help you just get all the gunge off the tip of your soldering iron we're going to put the small bridge in place that goes between pins 4 and 5 of V1 and V2. Grab a piece of your cable that you used for the filament wires and I like this cotton insulation because you can just pull it back and it's very easy to slide off the copper cable. We'll tin these two lugs and we'll also tin the end of this wire here. A good way to hold the component if you want to have your hands free is to use an alligator clip and that also acts as a heat sink. So if you're new to soldering or perhaps not so good at it and you tend to leave it on the lead for a long time, you don't want to be pumping too much heat through the component. So having the alligator clip there is, is also going to is going to prevent heat uh, going through the component and it's going to direct heat away down through to the vise. Solder runs toward the heat so what we want to do is have the soldering iron at the back of the lug here and we'll feed the solder in from the front side and we just want to create a heat bridge so we'll put a little little blob of solder on the tip there and then we can just touch that to the lug and then feed some solder in grab yourself an earth tag I like this variety of earth lug just with the sloping back on it grab yourself some braid and best size to use is around 1 8 inch or 532 is good and cut yourself off about 25 centimeters or around about one foot Then slip that over our ground lug. We'll just melt some solder into it. So it's going to come in pretty tight on the board because we're going to have our lamp that runs just here. And once I've got it in the right position, I'm just going to tighten up that screw again. I've got myself a lead weight that I've made out of a fishing sinker. And I'm going to just use that to weigh the braid down so I can solder it to my turrets.
I had a look at my own layout diagram and specifically in this area and I'd realized that I have made a mistake and instead of connecting my wires to these two turrets I've connected them to these two turrets and I'm not too sure how I did that but it's a perfect example of why you do not solder in place the wires until you're absolutely sure that they're correct so I'm just going to have to rectify that now before we go any further all sorted now we can move on so they're all good right let's move on to components and I think we'll start with the resistors connected to the tube sockets on V1 Alright, the first two resistors we're going to do are R3 and R4 and they go to pins 1 and pin 6 which are the plates And we'll do the same for pin number two. And pins number two and seven are the grids of the triodes. I always try to make the leads as short as possible going into the grid. Have a look at the circuit and make sure that you've got the right values make sure that you're joining up the right pins and make sure everything's correct and the other thing i do now is i have a look at which pin is going to be problematic to solder and it's quite evident that pin number one here is going to be very difficult to solder so let's have a look and see what else is on number number one pin and we've got r4 and also we've got C4 we'll certainly have to put a sleeve of insulation on here and what I'll do now is just I'll get rid of this component so I can solder these in place I'll just tin those components things tend to move when you solder them you tend to hit them with the soldering iron or the solder itself melts and it moves so I've got things supported uh, the component itself supported with an alligator clip uh, for a heat sink and also it's supporting its weight on other pins and I've also got the long nose priors that are supporting the component onto the turret board so hopefully with this setup it shouldn't move I think we'll go ahead and solder this resistor in place to pin number two and if we have a look on the circuit diagram it's only got the sole resistor connected to it let's have a look what's connected to pin three we've got C3 there R6 and we've got C2 Just keep the label up so we keep things neat and tidy next we'll do pin 8 which has only got resistor 5 that's connected to it
I've placed R7 and R8 the two 47k resistors on the turret board in this configuration and I've, I was able to use the, the actual leads of the resistors to continue on to the earth grounding lastly you can put in the large electrolytic capacitor onto the turret board and just give yourself enough clearance down this end that you're clear from the from the ground wires there I always like to leave a little bit extra from wrapping around the turret from the electrolytic just to let it sit over the earth strap there just to give a another more solid grounding point from the turret I'm very happy with the way those components have been set out and at this stage I'm going to check and double check that everything is in the right place and that there are no mistakes and bear in mind that we haven't soldered any of the turrets yet as there's some switching and a few other things to go in there and in the next video we'll continue with the rest of the turret board and get all that sorted